I want you to imagine you've just opened your very own restaurant and you've put everything into it, time, money, blood, sweat and tears, and then a few weeks after the grand opening of your beloved restaurant, you start to receive reviews online like this. Terrible, the clerk is sticky. I don't want to even have one star. It is not worth the star. All you can drink lasts without salads. Salads are scraps of sack. I went there at 10.30 p.m., but when I tried to replace rice, it was said there was no more grass. On the 10th day of every month, we can eat puppy ramen with f***ing hell. On the 10th day of every month, we can eat puppy ramen with 500 yen on pig bone day. The store here is dirty and my parents don't love it. Should I clean the store if it's a proper store? There is no meal at all. It really is a scam level store. Impressive chemical ramen with a great chemical seasoning. All of the pottery is delicious with delicate taste and cannot be said as a delicious category. The sound in the store is too high. Even earplugs bang. Come in. When I parked to the next parking lot, I was told by an old lady here and I didn't know what I was saying, but I was angry. Very unpleasant. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll close my imaginary restaurant. Now these eyebrow raising remarks aren't the ramblings of the insane, they are in fact Japanese reviews that have been auto-translated by Google into English, with often confusing and alarming results. But clearly something has gone horribly wrong during the translation phase of the review, which is hardly a surprise given translating between Japanese and English can be notoriously difficult, as any new learner of Japanese will tell you. Admittedly, in my first year of living in Japan, I relied on Google Translate a lot more than I'd care to admit, though I soon discovered while it's fairly reliable for individual words or simple sentences, the longer the sentences get, the quicker they fall apart and the more you sound like a deranged madman. So today in this video I thought we could go through some of these reviews and uncover where it went wrong and why translating Japanese sentences into English leads to the spectre of puppy ramen and sticky clerks. A sentence I never hope to say out loud again. We'll also hear the most common mistake that new learners of Japanese make. And because I wanted to include the insights of a native Japanese speaker, for better or worse, we'll be hearing from my good friend Ryotaro, who's fluent in Japanese and English, having lived overseas in an extensive list of exotic lands, including America, the UK, Germany, Australia, and Narnia. Now, as a disclaimer, it's important to point out that uh, some translations are beyond all hope, like this shirt I bought down the 100 yen store today, which says in big English words, your comrades is glad. Your comrades is glad. Who are my comrades? Why are they so glad? Powerful philosophical questions for another time. But I like to imagine that is the exact kind of phrase that a, a Russian <laughs> general would say to their troops to, to get them fired up, to get them motivated. I'm starting to wonder if the 100 yen store just makes these weird English shirts just because they know there's a British weirdo that will come in and literally buy anything, no matter what English you print on it. Clearly the... Uh, Strategies working. Right then, let's dive into some Google Translate reviews. It was a pity that we quit smoking. I managed to fill my stomach. When I parked to the next parking lot, I was told by an old lady here and I didn't know what I was saying, but I was angry. Very unpleasant. Yeah, I think my brain just crashed. As you look through these reviews though, it quickly becomes clear that they're all failing for the same reason. And it's actually the same thing that trips up learners of Japanese early on. In everyday Japanese, you don't need to explicitly state the subject. So for example, if I want to say, I went to Tokyo, I would say, Tokyo ni ikimashita. Literally, Tokyo towards went. Notice how that phrase, I didn't say the word I though, I didn't refer to myself, because you don't need to in Japanese. Now you could do, you could say watashi wa Tokyo ni ikimashita, but it's not needed because it's pretty obvious who's going to Tokyo here. I'm the one speaking, I'm the only one in the room. Uh, you can kind of understand it from the context, right? But this is one of the hardest things to wrap your head around when you first start learning Japanese, that you don't need to say I, you, he, she, they. And this is where Google Translate has tripped up on all three of these examples. So for the first one, it was a pity that we quit smoking. I managed to fill my stomach. But the original Japanese sentence actually says, what a shame it became non-smoking. Somehow I filled myself up. AKA the restaurant in question became non-smoking, but nevertheless our beloved reviewer was able to fill their stomach and stuff themselves with food. But not before awarding only one star. Though let's face it, any restaurant that bans smoking should at least receive one more bonus star. Now the sentence literally says, became non-smoking, what a shame. Somehow stomach filled up. So there's no clear subject. Google Translate had to take a guess, had to fill in the gaps. And in this case, 
rather than choose the restaurant because it didn't have the context of where the review was left, it just guessed that it was the reviewer, or in this case, we. Same goes for the next one. When I parked in the next parking lot, I was told by an old lady here and I didn't know what I was saying, but I was angry. Very unpleasant. I get a headache just reading that, honestly. But the original sentence says, I parked in the car park next to the restaurant and an elderly looking woman said something that I didn't understand, but she had an angry expression. It was unpleasant. In all honesty, it sounds less like a review and more like the start of a low budget horror film. Why was she angry? What was going down in that car park? We'll never find out, we'll never know. But in the Japanese sentence, the reviewer doesn't say I once. They don't say watashi wa or boku wa. Uh, the only subject she explicitly states is the old woman from here, from the cafe. And given it's a long sentence requiring a lot of guesswork, Google has unsurprisingly struggled to keep up. Though to be fair, it did guess three out of five of the pronouns correctly. So that's the first reason, and arguably the main reason why these auto translations go so spectacularly wrong. Speaking Japanese relies way more heavily on context. One key tip to new learners of Japanese is to avoid using pronouns altogether. You, he or she, anata, kare, kanajo, they all kind of sound rude and impersonal, and I wouldn't recommend using them at all. Uh, for more on this important point though, I'll hand you over to risottoro. When I hear um, someone foreign uh, saying anata wa or watashi wa, uh, you, I, then I'll say uh, amateur. Uh, amateur. <laughs> <laughs> In English, you always have to say, I do this, or you do you, or you. We, we don't really say that. It's quite obvious that who you're talking to, because the, if the person is in front of you, it's quite quite clear that you're talking to that person. You can So you can drop you, or you can drop I. So it'll be like, um, do you speak English? But if you're a first time learner of Japanese, uh, you tend to say, anata wa eigo shaberimasu then like, so I can easily see that person is just learning Japanese because he doesn't drop, he didn't drop the, um, the subject. So when, if it, the tip is that like, you always like, drop the subject if you're talking, if it's clear that like, who you're talking to. And also do not use pronouns such as uh, kare wa, kanojo wa, he or she, don't use that. Or you always use the name, like you know, Chris wa, Ryotaro wa, just use the name and that's the tip. I got a lot of belly. Terrible. The clerk is sticky. On the tenth day of every month, we can eat puppy ramen. Oh, what an utter train wreck. But why? I got a lot of belly. And I can't exactly help it, given I can't go outside at the moment. It's so bloody hot. Actually, it says, tarikimasta, which means I had a good meal. But literally interpreted, it does say, a full stomach I received. The Japanese language is ripe with metaphors, particularly your stomach when it comes to hunger. For example, if you're hungry, you'd say onaka suiteru, literally stomach empty. And if you're full after a nice big meal of puppy ramen, you would say onaka epai, stomach is full. And it seems Google tripped up on that metaphor, even if it is an everyday Japanese phrase. Which takes us to the second point why these translations go wrong. The vocabulary, the words themselves. Maybe it's a word that doesn't exist in English or a metaphor or concept that can't literally be translated. Uh, example, Terrible. The clerk is sticky. I don't want to even have one star. To be fair, who could honestly say they'd award any stars to a restaurant if they encountered a sticky clerk? The good news is, judging by the original review, uh, they might not have been so sticky after all. Terrible, it says. The staff try to look cool. I don't want to give them a single star. The reason this went wrong is the verb doesn't really exist in English. The verb is charutsuiteru, which means to make oneself look cool which doesn't really exist in English. We don't have a single word that can, that can explain that concept. How do we get from that to sticky? Well, if you look up the word charatsuiteru, there is a kanji you can use for it, and that kanji can mean to adhere to or to stick to, hence the word sticky. And thus we've solved the mystery of the sticky clerk. Thank God. However, the really scary translations are the ones where Google has just conjured up words out of thin air. On the 10th day of every month, we're gonna eat puppy ramen with 500 yen on pig bone day. Pig bone day. Why does that conjure up images of David Cameron? Oh yeah. Now this is sinister because at no point in the sentence is there any mention of puppies or dogs or animals. Where did the word puppy come from? The sentence literally says, on the 10th day of every month on pork broth day, you can eat Opeshan ramen, 500 yen. Opeshan being the name of the restaurant. Now somehow Google turned Opeshan into puppy and I don't know how. 
and I've even sent this to a professional translator, a friend who's not Ryotaro, but another native speaker of Japanese, and they don't have a clue either. They just think it's a glitch with Google. It just pulled the word puppy out of nowhere. Terrifying. Is it a sinister conspiracy by Google to create puppy ramen? Definitely, it definitely is. For me though, one of the most interesting aspects of learning a new language is discovering words and concepts that don't exist in your native tongue. And in the case of Japanese, there are quite a few everyday words that can't literally be translated into English. For example, whenever you meet someone in Japan for the first time, you end your kind of personal introduction with the phrase Yoroshiku nagaishimasu, which means please have favour upon me. That's the easiest way I can say it. But imagine going up to someone in the UK or the US and saying, Hi there, I'm Chris. Please have favour upon me. Might be a quick way to lose friends, but it's a testament to the sheer politeness of the Japanese language that you're either apologising or saying thank you to someone in advance of something that may or may not even happen in the near future. Let's see if we can break Ryotaro by getting him to translate it. What about the words or the phrase, Yoroshiku onegaishimasu? Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Um, it's, um, um, I don't know, how do you say that? In English. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm the person who I'm, who's playing a game with you, and I'm honored to see you here. <laughs> Something like that. But it doesn't exist in English. Uh, amateur. On the flip side, there's also words that don't exist in Japanese, like brother. How do you say in Japanese, do you have any brothers? Kyodai imasu ka? The kyodai means siblings. Siblings, right? yeah. So what's the word for brother? Uh, depending on which brother you're talking about, elder brother or younger brother? Just my brother. Uh, there, is no, there is no such word for just a brother. How many words are there for brother in Japanese, do you think? Uh, ani, oto, to, uh, I think like four or five, I guess. I mean, I can think of. <laughs> to be honest, as much as we've mocked Google Translate today and it kind of exposed its shortcomings, it is surprisingly good a lot of the time. And at the very least, you're able to have a rough idea of what's being said, and that's what most people want or need at the end of the day. But Google Translate is able to do something effortlessly that most new learners of Japanese really struggle to do, which is flip the Japanese sentence around and reconstruct it to make it sound like English. In English, we have subject, verb, object. I went to the station. In Japanese, they have subject, object, verb. I station went. And honestly, it took me months to wrap my head around this and to kind of rewire my thinking. It might look easy on a simple sentence, but it gets more complicated as that sentence gets bigger. For example, the person eating ice cream walked towards the station. Now in Japanese, that would be Ice cream tabeteru hito wa eki no hou ni aruite ita. Literally, ice cream eating person regarding the station in the direction of walk towards. And that is why your brain will crash if you try to think literally between Japanese and English, if you translate it in your head. And it's why thinking fluently in Japanese early on is pretty difficult to do. But fortunately, as the weeks and months roll on and you keep studying, you keep practicing speaking, your brain does start to rewire itself. And it's one of the most stressful and rewarding experiences you can have. But it's a tough thing to explain, and that is why we've got Ryotaro. When, you, when you're translating between English and Japanese, yep. what's the thought process like? Well, there is no thought process at all, because um, it's like a drawer. Uh, when I speak Japanese, my Japanese drawer is open and my English drawer is closed. And um, when I speak English, the Japanese drawer is closed, then English drawer is open. But uh, when I speak the language I'm not so confident of, for instance, when I speak German or when I speak Italian, um, both languages I'm not really confident. Um, it, chances are that two drawers open at the same time and it gets all mixed up. So what have we learned today? We've learned that Google Translate isn't that bad at translating, as long as it's a simple sentence and as long as the subject is clear. And we've learned that Ryotaro has an obsession with drawers. If you have any more questions on learning the Japanese language, do fire away in the comments below and do check out the playlist on the Abroad in Japan channel of all the Japanese learning content. There's quite a lot of useful stuff there for new beginners and learners. For more behind the scenes content, check out the Abroad in Japan Patreon. But for now guys, as always, many thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. As for me, it's pig bone day. So I'm off to a scam level store to get some chemical ramen with my comrades. They're all very glad because they love pig bone day. They love Friday. Action. One, two. Fuck, there's still a shadow. Fuck it. All right, ready? One, three, two, one. Waving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
Nein. Nein. <lacht>